Brahma said, Guna Nidhi, the son of the Dikshita Yagyadatta, came to know of this. Regretfully, he cursed himself and set off from that place. After wandering aimlessly for a long time, he, the wicked fellow, felt the abandonment keenly. Losing all hope, he halted at a place. He thought to himself, where am I to go? What shall I do? I haven't studied much, nor am I rich enough. Only a wealthy man can be happy in a foreign land, although he has to face the fear of thieves there. Of course, this fear is present everywhere. I am born in the family of priests officiating at sacrifices. Why am I reduced to this wretched plight? Fate is powerful indeed, controlling all our future actions. I cannot even beg, as I have no acquaintance, no money. Where shall I seek refuge? Every day, even before sunrise, my mother used to feed me with sweet pudding. From whom shall I beg today? My mother, too, is away from me. O oh, Narda, even as he was musing like this, woefully, sitting at the foot of a tree, the sun set. In the meantime, a certain devotee of Lord Shiva came out of the city, taking with him various articles for offering. He had observed fast on Shivaratri day. In order to worship Lord Shiva, he was on his way along with his kinsmen and was carrying different sorts of delightful offerings. The devotee entered the temple of Shiva, where he worshipped him in the prescribed manner with sincere devotion. The Brahmana boy, son of Yagnyadatta, devoid of his mother and dismissed by his father, was very hungry by this time. He inhaled the fragrance of the sweet puddings and followed the devotee. If fortunately these devotees of Shiva go to sleep after offering the eatables to Shiva, I shall eat these vast varieties of puddings and sweets in the night. With this hope, he sat at the threshold of the temple of Shiva, watching the great worship by the devotee. When the worship was over, the songs and dances of prayer were duly concluded. The devotees lay down and began to sleep. Immediately the young man entered the Sanctum Sanctorum of Shiva in order to steal the eatables left there. The lamp was burning very dimly. Hence, in order to see the puddings clearly, he tore a piece of cloth from his lower garment and put that piece in the lamp as a wick, making the lamp give a good light. Yagnyadatta's son gleefully took plenty of the sweets offered as eatables to Lord Shiva by the devotees. With sweets in his hands, he came out hurriedly. In his hurry, he stamped on some person lying there, who woke up immediately. Who is that? Who is running away so fast? Catch him! shouted the man, who woke up in a voice hoarse with fear. The Brahmana boy Gudaniti, who ran for his life, became blind. So he was caught and killed by the watchman on duty. O sage, by the favor of Shiva, or by the power of accumulated merit, the son of Yagnadatta could not partake of the offerings of eatables made to Lord Shiva. The terrible soldiers of Yama, who desired to take him to Sangyamani, the abode of Yama, approached him with nooses and clubs in their hands, and bound him. In the meantime, the attendants of Shiva with tridents in their hands and tinkling anklets on their arms reached the spot in an aerial chariot to take him to Shivaloka. The Shivaganas said, O attendants of Yama, leave this righteous Brahmana alone. He cannot be punished since his sins have been burnt off. On hearing these words of Shiva's attendants, the attendants of Yama became terrified and addressed the attendants of Shiva. The Yamaganas said, O Ganas, this is a wicked Brahmana who has broken the traditions and conventions of his family. He has disobeyed his father's directions and has forsaken truthfulness and purity. 
He does not offer his Sandhya prayers. He does not take his ceremonial baths regularly. Leave aside his other activities, he has now transgressed and outraged the offerings of eatables made to Shiva. You can see this personally. In fact, he is not worthy of even being touched by people like you. The mere touch of persons who consume or outrage the offerings of eatables made to Shiva and those who offer these to others, it is said, is sinful. Even poison is not so dangerous when drunk. Never shall a person make use of Shiva's property, even if he were to die. It is granted that you are an authority on virtue. We are not. But, O oh Ganas, if this fellow has at least a bit of virtue to his credit, please let us hear the same. On hearing these words of Yama's attendants, the attendants of Shiva remembered the lotus-like feet of Shiva and spoke to them thus. O oh, attendants of Yama, Shiva's ideas of Dharma are very subtle. They can be observed only by persons of subtle and keen vision, not by people like you who are aware of only the gross exterior. O oh, Ganas, hear attentively what this son of Yajnadatta has done, which has freed him from sins. The shadow of the lamp was falling on the top of the linga, and this brahmana prevented it by adding a wick to the lamp at night, cutting a piece from his lower cloth. Another great merit he derived from listening to the names of Shiva, though casually, O oh attendants. He witnessed the worship that was being performed duly by a devotee. He was observing a fast, and his mind was concentrated too. Let him go to Shiva Loka along with us. As Shiva's follower, let him enjoy great pleasures there for some time. Then he will shake off his sins and become the king of Kalinga, since he has indeed become a great favorite of Shiva. Nothing else need be mentioned now. Let all of you, emissaries of Yama, return to your own world with contented minds. Brahma said, O lordly sage, on hearing these words of Shiva's attendants, the emissaries of Yama returned to Yama's abode. O sage, they narrated to Yama whatever the messengers of Shiva told them about Dharma, etc. Dharma Raj said, O Ganas, listen attentively to what I say. Whatever I direct you to do, you shall do with loving devotion. O Ganas, you shall avoid those persons who bear on their forehead the mark of Tripundra besmeared with white ashes. Never shall they be brought here. O Ganas, you shall avoid those persons who regularly dust their body with white ashes. Never shall they be brought here. You shall avoid all those persons who assume the garb and features of Shiva, whatever their reason might be. Never shall they be brought here. You shall avoid those persons who wear rudrakshas and keep matted hair. Never shall they be brought here. You shall avoid those persons who imitate the dress or the features of Shiva, even for their livelihood. Never shall they be brought here. You shall avoid those persons who imitate the dress and features of Shiva, even for the purpose of deception. Never shall they be brought here. Brahma said, Yama thus commanded his servants. They too agreed to follow his command and remained silent with a flickering smile on their lips. Thus, freed from the emissaries of Yama, the Brahmana boy became pure-minded and went to Shiva Loka along with the attendants of Shiva. There, he served Shiva and Shiva, Parvati, and enjoyed all sorts of pleasures. Afterwards, he was born as the son of Arindam, the king of Kalinga. Known as Dhamma, he was devoted to the service of Shiva. Even as a boy, he carried on many acts of devotion to Shiva in the company of other children. When his father passed away, he became the king in the prime of his youth. He spread the ideals and tenets of Shiva in his kingdom lovingly. 
The king Dhamma was unconquerable. O Brahmana, he did not stress any act of piety other than furnishing temples of Shiva with lamps in plenty. He called headmen of the villages in his kingdom and asked them to furnish all temples of Shiva with lamps. He warned them that if they defaulted, they would be punished. It is declared in the Vedas that Shiva is delighted at the gift of a lamp to his temples. He said, Therefore, you headmen shall see that the temples of Shiva in your jurisdiction are properly illuminated with lamps. There is no question of hesitation in this matter. Undoubtedly, I shall get the defaulter beheaded. Thus, for fear of him, every temple was duly illuminated. With this act of piety alone, as long as he lived, the King Dhamma acquired ample prosperity. Finally, he passed away. The impression of lamps persisted in his mind. He caused many lamps to be lighted. Finally, he became the Lord of Alaka with gem-set lamps to his credit. Thus, even the smallest service rendered to Shiva bears rich fruit in time. Let all persons seeking happiness realize this and continue the worship of Shiva. As son of the Dikshita, he never cared for any act of piety. He had entered the temple of Shiva to steal. He had brightened the lamp there to serve his own end, thereby dispelling the shadow of darkness on top of the linga. Then he became the virtuous king of Kalinga. O foremost of the sages, where the wicked son of the Dikshita, and where the guardian of a quarter? Although he had been simply a man, he became the guardian of a quarter. Thus I have narrated the story of Gunanidhi, the son of Yagyadatta. This story is pleasing to Shiva. Besides, it grants all desires to the listening devotees. O oh, dear one, next I shall tell you how he became the close friend of Shiva. Please listen attentively.